there's no questions about the unit, um, all right, so with this unit, it is definitely more history based. So the lessons just basically how I set this up um, is we're basically going through, um, we're gonna basically go through the French and Indian War from start to finish. Um, now I might jump back and forth a little bit, but for the most part, you're gonna get go from the beginnings, that's what we're doing today, all the way until um, the end the end. Uh, Gavin, this is leading up to the American Revolution. Um, you're gonna, we're gonna leave you on a cliffhanger for the year, um, and to leave you off at a cliffhanger for the summer because um, the American Revolution is what you learn about the first thing in eighth grade. Um, actually, I had a lot of fun last year teaching it. Um, there's really cool things that, you know, I even forgot about. Um, even as teachers, we, um, we're not all know-it-alls, you know, but we know a lot, but um, we always get to relearn things. And there's a lot of things I got to relearn, too, um, because I specialized in Latin American history in college. So I kind of, like, skimped out on all the American history because I was so—by the, by the end of high school, I was tired of American history. I wanted something different. But that's another point for another day. Classic Mr. Lowe quote right there. Um, so, um, French and Indian War beginnings. Uh, let's dive into this. Remember that to kind of start us off here, um, we, this, the British, French, and the Spain, and, uh, British, French, and Spain, um, France and Spain, um, they were all at this point in time, we're looking at 18th century, 16th, 17th, 18th century, they were going out and trying to basically conquest and take over different land as own as much land as they can. Basically, if you own land at this time, you were considered a powerhouse. And so one of those pieces of land that was on every all these big threes, uh, big three countries mind was North America. Because in North America, that was a giant chunk of land. It's going to give you a giant um, surplus of resources. And it prevents you from using your own resources. I'm just going to waste all the resources in uh, North America, uh, protect our own trees and stuff like that. We'll keep our place looking pretty. We'll just chop down all the trees and stuff and make um, uh, North America our uh, money-making ground. And so, to kind of set the stage here for the French and Indian War, um, we're basically looking at 1754 to 1763. Now, this war, um, I say 1754 because there's some events that started way beforehand. Um, before 1756 to 1763, which is the seven years that the war actually lasted. Some people even call the French and Indian War the Seven Years War. Um, now, this war, it's called the French and Indian War, and we'll get into that later on, maybe next week, or uh, next week, or sorry, tomorrow, th th Thursday, um, but this war is basically a struggle between Britain and France, and the whole reason for this war, it started due to competition for land. That's basically the, the reason um, now, there's something that sparks the battling, um, but we'll get to that in a little bit. The reason for the war, though, is competition for land, and we're going to see that in just a second. So, if anybody's, I don't know if anybody takes notes during these or anything like that, but I'll give you just a little bit. And remember, these are all um, recorded, so you can rewatch um, if you want to. Uh, yeah, Australia was on Great Britain's mind, um, but I, I want to say, I don't think that was, like, at this 
point in time. I want to say that was probably, um, when was that? Um, that was much later, I want to say. I think. So, continuing on. At this point in time, remember, Britain owned the 13 colonies. As you see here in this dark, like, mustard color, this is the land that Britain owned, all right? Now, France had control of Canada, and they called that New France. It's kind of like great, it's kind of like New Britain, you know? Um, but here's the problem. If you kind of see my laser pointer here, Britain wanted to expand westward, so they wanted to take their land and start pushing out this way. France also wanted to expand, but they wanted to go south. Now, that's where you start to see some of the problems. If you have one group coming in westward, and you see another group coming in south, they are going to meet. And that is just going to start to cause some conflicts. Now, this is just a little background history. Um, it's this, this is what I'm about to say. It's not something, this is just kind of to, again, set the stage for you all. Um, the British territory that they claimed, those 13 colonies, this was all... Um, it all was based on exploration um, by, of North America by John Cabot, or Cabot um, in the later part of the 15th century. Um, but in the early 17th century, an English royal charter granted land with inserted limits between the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean um, to both the Virginia Company and the Plymouth Company. Remember, we talked about those two companies last time. Um, in 1663, the province of Carolina was created um, to the south of Virginia with a sea to sea grant. The Carolina Charter was amended two years later, and the expanded territory would come to form the colonies North and South Carolina and Georgia. But all the land south of French Canada and to the north of Spanish Florida, stretching from sea to sea, were claimed by England in the conflict with this war. Um, with, with this was France's claim to the whole Mississippi Valley, including the Ohio Valley, and we're going to get into that right now. So, sorry, I thought my computer was going off the charts. So basically, they have, Great Britain has evidence that they own this land. France also has evidence that they own this land as well. And the land that's being disputed or will be disputed, is called the Ohio River Valley. And you can see here, Pennsylvania, if, if we were to call these states, Pennsylvania is only being uh, claimed half. And France has the, or the, uh, excuse me, the disputed area is this area right here. This lighter gray, or this lighter beige color. And so there's a ton of area that is disputed here. Now, why does this conflict start? And again, it's all because of that Ohio River Valley. And this green area is basically the Ohio River Valley. This is more the area that's being disputed here. The problem was, everyone wanted to know, is this a British empire or is this the French-owned empire? And so, as I already said, meeting was inevitable. They were going to meet because both sides wanted to expand. Now here's the thing. One of the things that's going to change this war is the allies that you have via Native Americans. Because both the French and the F British have allies with the Native Americans. And we're going to get into that much later on. But keep that behind in the back of your head because you know, these, these Native Americans are going to kind of change and everything's going to, they're going to help change the course of this whole war. 
Any questions so far? Also, let's give a shout out. I, I totally forgot to do it. So let's give a shout out to uh, Mrs. Waterman. Um, period six. We know how great she is in the art class. So let's give a shout out to Mrs. Waterman. All right. So. Conflict rises. Now, what happens here is, as I already said, we are trying. People are trying to move. Now, in Pennsylvania, they had Britain had traders. They had these big trading houses and things like that. Um, now they were in the upper part of the Ohio River Valley. So if I go back, they're pretty much up here, and they're getting really close to French. Where's Pennsylvania? Sorry, up here. They're getting really close to, let's say, Canada, Canada, France, or France, Cana French, Can French, Canada. At the same time, though, the French were in the same area as well. Now, France, they see this. They see these giant British flags, and and so the Governor General of France, New France, ordered this guy Pierre Joseph. Say seller on de Blainville to get the British trading houses to lower their flags. Basically, he had Blainville come down and start basically say, hey, you guys need to lower your flags. This is our land. Um, you should probably pack up and leave. Get out of here. Um, and at first, you know, the British were like, no, we own this land. So... What happens? The British traders were forced to retreat. And matters... There Now, remember, there's not just one trading house. There's multiple trading houses here. And so, by 1752, there's that special year, big French attack on different houses. Um, like Picawillany in the Great Miami River. That was a big trading uh, center for Britain. And so, that place gets attacked... And all these British people are being forced to leave. They weren't ready to fight. And so news is going to travel. So the French have now started a big attack on the war. Excuse me. Basically, they were the first ones to fire upon their enemy. Now... What happens here, though, is something else. Now, the French did even more. They didn't just force the British to leave. This move was followed by the capturing or killing of every English-speaking trader that the French and their Indian allies could find in the upper Ohio Valley. So now they're taking prisoners of war. So the French have started this war. Those actions struck directly not only at the people of Pennsylvania, but also in Virginia. So, they're not just getting attacked here. They're getting attacked all the way down in Virginia. And so, news is going to travel. And so, you have to respond to this. You can't just let this go untamed. You cannot just let... Your people get attacked, get forced out of an area that is rightfully theirs, in their eyes, and not do anything about it. So what happens here, ladies and gentlemen, is the government of Virginia, he's angry. He's so mad. He says, he declares that that land in the upper Ohio River Valley was part of the 1609 Charter. He has proof. He says, this is the Charter. Look at this thing. We own this land. So news makes it all the way out to Williamsburg. This is a big center. Um, and going back to the charter real quick, this basically argued that it was, um, this grant gave Virginia a claim to the Western land that was more valid than New France's claim. So 
And that's kind of like the thing that about this time is there's no really basic or st uh, stable, um, how do you want to call it? Oops. Um, there's basically no way of saying like, my document is more um, valuable than your document, you know? Because governments, besides Britain, France, and Spain, this it wasn't really set up as it is today. And so, basically, you got these two countries saying, my piece of paper is better than your piece of paper. And that's going to cause some problems. So, of course... One way to combat this is with fighting, with war. Now, once this news makes its way out to Williamsburg, Lieutenant Governor Robert Dinwiddie, uh, mouthful there, he dispatches young George Washington. So this is George Washington fresh. He is fresh out of military school, fresh out of uh, the militia school, um, and he is sent to French Fort Leboeuf, that's Waterford, PA. A lot of this takes place in near Pennsylvania, guys. So you should, might you might be familiar with some of these areas. Um, George Washington was sent down to this French fort, LaBeouf, in Waterford, PA, basically to tell everybody, get out. And he was basically to warn the French that the land was owned by them and they have a certain amount of time to leave. And Washington fails greatly here. He fails big time. Now, here's the thing about George Washington. He's a great, he was a good president. He was the first president. But he, it took him a long time before we, after this until we start to see some success. Washington is going to fail time and time again. And even to the point where his own soldiers during the American Revolution will want to leave him. They're going to want to leave him because they don't, they don't think, they don't trust his ability as a leader. But one thing that separates George Washington from other leaders is he never gives up. And he tries to make the best with the situations that he's given. So keep that in mind as we move forward. Now... What happens here is the French respond to this because um, at the same time, um, with Washington's failure, um, the Ohio Company of Virginia decides to go out and build a fort where the Allegheny and Monongahela rivers meet. That's modern Pittsburgh people. Now, this, as this fort was being built, the French see this. This is how, excuse me, this is how close and how disputed this land was, was basically, you couldn't do anything in this area without the other side seeing what you were doing. Plus, you probably, they probably had Native American scouts and things like that. Now, where the Allegheny and Monongahela rivers meet, you had this fort being built. The French see this, and the French troops are going to come down and basically swarm and over overcome the fort. They're going to basically going to stop the fort from being built, this uncompleted fort. And there's the thing. The company, the Ohio company, was waiting for Colonel Joshua Fry to arrive. But he was killed in May. And so Washington decides to take over command of Fry's militia, but he has to take post at another fort, called Fort Necessity. And so, ladies and gentlemen, on May 28th, Washington's forces engaged a French scouting party, killing the commander, Coulon de Jumonville, or Jumonville, and nine others as well as taking 20 prisoners. And we will talk about that, ladies and gentlemen. We will talk about the Fort Necessity battle on Thursday. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's get out, pull out the French and Indian War beginning Google um, form. Let's go over this thing. Any questions on this? Any questions before? Oh, let me get the chat back up. Any questions on uh, this before we move on, or before we go to the Google form? 
So now we are in battle. We are in pre-war. We're not necessarily 1754 yet. But we are basically, the, the, the foundation is there, and we're ready for war. Britain versus